This is part two of From Portraits to Puddles. It covers the Dewey Memorial. To get to the Dewey Memorial, turn your back on Erickson and walk toward Castle Clinton, that round, one-story stone building a couple hundred feet away. Keep Castle Clinton on your right as you head toward the water. The Dewey Memorial stands on the left, just before the steps that lead down to the promenade along the water in the gangway for the Statue of Liberty Ferry. The memorial is a bronze plaque about three feet high on a slanted granite support. It's so small that it's often obscured by pushcart vendors. We're pausing to look at it because the medallions reproduced on it were designed by Daniel Chester French. French is best known for the seated Lincoln in the Lincoln Memorial. He also sculpted the four continents that stand in front of the nearby U.S. Customs House at Bowling Green. Next section, the Dewey Medal. French was one of America's two or three most distinguished sculptors, so any sculpture of his that you can find is worth a look. The medallions on the Dewey Memorial are reproduced from a medal that Congress awarded to all members of the U.S. Navy and the U.S. Marine Corps who were present at the Battle of Manila Bay on May 1, 1898. This was during the Spanish-American War, which one contemporary dubbed a splendid little war. For more on that, see the essays in Outdoor Monuments of Manhattan on Jose Marti and Carl Schurz, and particularly the essay on the main monument, a splendid allegorical ensemble at Columbus Circle. That's the picture on the right on this slide. The 1800 or so copies of the medal awarded to those at the Battle of Manila Bay were cast by Tiffany and Company. Each bears on its reverse the name of one of the seven ships involved in the battle. On this one, it's the USS Concord. On the rim is the name of the circuit serviceman who received it. If you zoom in on this image, you can just see some lettering on the rim below the sailor. French produced a very good likeness of Admiral George Dewey. That's a difficult task in shallow relief where the bone structure can only be hinted at and one can't use color to help suggest three-dimensionality. The relief on the right of the Dewey Monument, the medal's reverse, shows a sailor perched on a cannon. French succeeded admirably at showing the seated sailor from the front with his legs in proper perspective. Beyond that, French has filled the circular shape of both medallions in a satisfying way, without lopping off limbs or leaving awkward blank spaces. It's a highly competent job. Next section, the Dewey Arch. The Dewey Memorial, honoring the Battle of Manila Bay, the one at Battery Park, is a small, faint reminder of a form of civic celebration that used to be more common than ticker tape parades. Dewey's return from the Philippines was celebrated in New York by the construction of a triumphal arch in Madison Square. The arch was temporary, built of plaster and wood like the buildings at the 1893 Columbian Exposition in Chicago. You may, have read, you may have read about such ephemeral buildings in Eric Larson's best-selling The Devil in the White City. The Dewey Arch was similar to the Washington Arch at Washington Square Park, but the Dewey Arch was much larger. The Washington Arch is 77 by 62 feet. The Dewey Arch was 100 by 80 feet, so about 20 feet higher and 20 feet wider. Like the Washington Arch, the Dewey Arch had numerous allegorical figures representing abstractions, in this case, triumph, victory, and battle. Like the Washington Arch, the sculptures were designed and executed by prominent artists of the day. New Yorkers hoped to raise funds to replicate the arch in a more permanent material. They abandoned their fundraising efforts, however, after Dewey lost the 1900 presidential nomination to William McKinley and Theodore Roosevelt. The temporary arch, which by that time had deteriorated into a public hazard, was carted off to the city dump. 
The Dewey Memorial, as you see it now, with reproductions of French's medallions, was erected in 1973 in honor of the 75th anniversary of the Battle of Manila Bay. Lesson number two. What does the Dewey Arch show us that's relevant for the World Trade Center Memorial? It wasn't a portrait sculpture. It was architecture, but it was covered with allegorical figures that illustrated how most Americans at the time felt about their victory in the Spanish-American War. The point for the World Trade Center Memorial is that a memorial need not be a representation of a specific person or event. Allegorical or symbolic figures can be very expressive. That's the end of part two.